Oliver was attacked in his flat and taken to the hospital. There are four suspects, all of them Oliver's neighbors. Wow, I'd find another apartment. Amelia said she'd been walking in the park since early morning. Henry explained he had been painting in his studio and had heard nothing. Jacob said he had been repairing his car. Sophia answered she'd been taking a bath for the past three hours. Look at these people's hands and try to figure out who's lying. It's a bit strange that Jacob, who was repairing his car, and Henry, who was painting, both have such clean hands. But they could be wearing gloves. On the other hand, Sophia's hands and fingers don't have wrinkles. But it would be a natural skin reaction after three hours in a bathtub. Sophia, you've been caught red, I mean, smooth-handed. The police found out there was a new smuggler in town. Three people were under suspicion. Luna, a school bus driver, Jackson, a fire truck driver, and Daniel, an ambulance driver. All of them claim to have been busy with their work since the very morning. Can you figure out who's the smuggler? Look at the car Daniel drives. On such vehicles, the word ambulance is normally written backward. It's done so that other drivers can instantly read the inverted word in their rearview mirrors. Well, it seems Daniel has given himself away. It was the day when Jacob was supposed to be discharged from the hospital. He had spent a couple of months there and underwent several surgeries. His doctor told him he was going to be fine. It was safe for Jacob to leave the hospital. But the guy didn't believe these promises. In low spirits, he walked home. On the way, he accidentally bumps into an elderly lady. She gets furious and started to shout at Jacob. But instead of arguing back, he hugged the woman and ran home. Why? Jacob had hearing loss. He didn't believe his problem could be helped. But when he heard the woman shouting at him, he realized the doctor had told him the truth. Maybe the doctor should have shouted. (laughs) Chloe stayed late at the office that day. When she was driving home, the woman was worn out. At one moment, she even started to doze off. That's when it happened. She spun off the road and crashed through the fence that was on her way. She couldn't control the car anymore. It slipped down a steep hill and ended up in a lake. Chloe couldn't move her arms, they were stuck. She couldn't undo her seatbelt or open the door. The car sank to the bottom of the lake. Was Chloe doomed? Rescuers arrived three hours later. The woman was still in the car, but she was alive. How did she survive? After the car hit the bottom of the lake, The water only came up to Chloe's throat. It was a very shallow lake. Good thing, huh? It was Jack's birthday, and the fellow got a present he had been dreaming about for ages. A motorbike. The next morning, he rode his bike to college and left it at the parking lot. During lunchtime, Jack decided to check on his motorbike. Imagine his horror when he found out someone had broken the mirrors. The security guard told Jack, Only three other people had left his building in the afternoon. They were Owen and Sam, two best friends, and Layla, the girl who once liked Jack but got turned down by him. Owen said he and Sam had gone to the campus cafe to get sandwiches for lunch. Sam confirmed this. He then added the bike could have been damaged by Layla out of revenge. But Layla told Jack her mother had visited her and they had spent two hours together. So, who's lying? Owen has a paper bag with food delivery written on it. It means the guys ordered their lunch, not bought it in the cafe. They broke Jack's mirrors and tried to frame Layla. Not a good reflection on them, huh? Detective Taylor was chasing a dangerous criminal. Suddenly, the man entered a hospital. Oh no, there are hundreds of rooms there. 
Luckily, it was raining, and the criminal left footprints on the hospital floor. The detective followed them and got into a small room. There were three people there, all covered in bandages from head to toe. But one of them was a fake patient. Who? It was the dude in the middle. He didn't even have a medical chart next to his bed. Very quick job on the bandages, though. The CEO of a large company called the police. He was sure that one of his employees, Victoria, had stolen a memory card with secret information. She was going to sell it to their competitors. The police arrived at Victoria's house, but the woman didn't let them in without a warrant. The officers had to leave to get all the necessary papers. By the time they were back, Victoria had already been sitting in her car, ready to drive off. The police officers arrested the woman. They searched her car and clothes, but found nothing. And then, when they were about to give up, one of the detectives realized where Victoria kept the memory card. Can you figure it out? When the police first came to her, the woman had her hair down. But after that, Victoria changed her hairstyle. The memory card is in her bun. Yep, Victoria and her sticky bun. (laughs) Michael was going home from the gym when everything went black. When he regained consciousness, he found out he was in a locked room. Next to the door, there was a computer with a keyboard. On the screen, there was a riddle. Michael had to write the correct answer and the door would open. The riddle went like this. It makes two people out of one. What is it? Michael typed the needed word and the door opened. He was free to go. What was the answer? It's a mirror. Oh, I was guessing a buzzsaw, but this one is better and not as messy. Two best friends, Emily and Luna, came to a popular and expensive hair salon. At first, the administrator told the girls they had just one available hairstylist. But after making a phone call, she happily announced she had found another hairdresser. Emily and Luna could have their hair done at the same time. But in the process, it dawned on the girls that one of the hairstylists was fake. Which one? Both hairstylists are using regular scissors, but instead of hairspray, the one on the left is holding a can of bug spray. Yeah, that's a big clue right there. A man on a bike grabbed Sarah's bag with all her documents, money, and smartphone and sped off. The only way the girl can get her bag back is by taking someone's car and driving after the criminal. There are three vehicles parked nearby. Which one can Sarah break into and drive off? Whoops, I mean borrow. A man is sitting in the blue car. That's no good. If she decides to take the red car, CCTV will spot her. Her only option is the brown vehicle. Oh, and Sarah, don't forget to return the wheels when you get your bag back, otherwise you'll be Grand Theft Sarah. Mary and her younger brother Alex were mushroom hunting in the forest. Wait, mushroom hunting? What do you do, sneak up on them so they don't escape? Anyway, they started to quarrel. Alex got angry and ran away. After several minutes, Mary rushed after him. She was still fuming, but also worried. Soon, the girl reached a small river. A man was sitting on the shore. Um, did you see a teenager here? Mary asked. Yep, he's just taken a boat and made it to the other side. But Mary didn't believe the man. Why? The boat is indeed on the other side, but the paddles are lying next to the man. How could the boy cross the river without them? So, where's Alex? Kidnapped by the escaped mushrooms? We may never know. Ella came to a party that took place in her best friend's house. It was a riddle party. 
All the guests had to crack mysteries and participate in different challenges. Ella's task was to get out of a locked room in the basement. The girl was blindfolded, taken downstairs, and left alone. After pulling the piece of cloth off her eyes, Ella noticed the door had a code lock. She also spotted a sheet of paper lying on the floor next to the door. There were four flowers drawn there. Ella looked at them for a while and entered the correct code. The door opened and the girl joined the party. So what was the code? Ella counted the petals on each flower. The code was 5748. Carter was visiting his friend Mateo, who lived in another city. Mateo loved riddles. In the evening, he challenged Carter to get the key to the guest room where the guy was supposed to be sleeping. Mateo dropped the key in the bucket filled with cold water and told Carter to get it. But he couldn't touch the water or use anything to pull the key out. That night, Carter slept in the guest room. How did he get the key? He put the bucket over a fire. The water started to boil and soon evaporated. After that, Carter picked the key up. Mateo was steamed. Nora was an insurance agent. Once, her client called her early in the morning. The woman was in tears. At night, someone had broken into her house. By the time the woman had enough courage to go downstairs, the thief had already taken all the valuables. When she looked out of the window, the man was running away. Do you remember what he looked like? Nora asked. The client answered, It was still dark outside. I understood it was a man, tall and thin. He had dark hair and was wearing a v-neck t-shirt. Nora immediately realized her client had staged the burglary. How did she figure it out? It was dark, and the man was running away from the client's house. Then how could the woman see he was wearing a v-neck t-shirt? Beats me. Once, Adam agreed to take part in a popular TV show. He had to crack logic puzzles and solve detective riddles to get $1 million. If only he knew at that moment where this decision would lead him. When the guy arrived at the venue, a staff member put a blindfold over his eyes. After that, Adam was taken someplace and left alone. After waiting in silence for a couple of minutes, the guy pulls the blindfold off. He's in a rather large room. There's nothing there except four doors. The guy feels something's wrong, but he can't grasp what exactly. And suddenly, he realizes the ceiling is going down. He needs to get out of the room and fast. He examines the doors more closely. Aha! They all have notes that describe what's behind each of them. The first one, a lake full of piranhas. The second, a room where an avalanche will happen once he sets foot inside. The third, high voltage wires hanging above a wet floor. The fourth is a 15th floor room with only one window. Adam knows he needs to decide fast. He opens one door and jumps inside a moment before the ceiling crashes down. Luckily, it's a safe room. Which one is it? The guy picked room number 3. The wires don't touch the water on the floor, and there's some space left between them and the ground. It means it's safe to crawl under the wires. Adam makes it to the next room and finds a note with a task on it. A coin is put into an empty bottle, which is then plugged with a cork. How can you remove the coin without breaking the bottle or pulling the cork out? Adam doesn't need much time to get the coin out. What does he do? Adam pushes the cork into the bottle and shakes the coin out. His next task is to figure out who a criminal is. An elderly lady was walking in the park when a stranger grabbed her bag and hurried away. 
The woman told the police the man was wearing a coat, a hat, and a pair of glasses. He also had a mustache. The police officers ran in the direction the lady showed them. A bit further, they found the hat, coat, and glasses lying on the ground. They figured out the criminal could hide in the nearby cafe. Adam has a photo of four men, all of them cafe visitors. He needs to understand who took the bag from the elderly woman. He immediately points at one man, and his answer is correct. Which man is it? It can't be the man in a hat or the one wearing a coat. The criminal also got rid of his glasses. It means the man wanted by the police is the one on the right. He has a small wound on his upper lip, must have got rid of his fake mustache in a hurry. The riddle is solved and Adam can go further. Soon he finds out he has to act as a detective again. A famous artist nearly finished his new painting, but he had to leave for France. It was an urgent matter, and it kept the man in Paris for a week. When he returned, he discovered his work had been spoiled. Someone had spilled black paint all over it. And it happened recently, because the paint was still fresh. The artist was furious. He invited his maid, gardener, and maintenance worker and questioned them. He said, someone spoiled my painting while I was away. Do you know anything about it? I never enter your studio without your permission, the maid said. The maintenance worker added, We don't use black paint for any repairs in the house. I don't know who could do that. Gardner got angry. I've been working for you for 15 years. Do you think I could do this to you? All of them sounded sincere. But then, who spoiled the painting? Being a smart guy, Adam realizes right away the one to blame is the maintenance worker. The artist never mentioned the way the painting was spoiled. Since the answer is correct, Adam can continue. He enters a narrow hall. There, on a small table, there's a glass of orange juice. It seems to be half full, but Adam has to figure out if it's really so. How can he do it without using any measuring tools or pouring any juice out of the glass? Adam tilts the glass until the juice is just touching the rim. The bottom of the glass is invisible. So the guy concludes the glass is more than half full. If a part of the bottom was visible, it would mean the glass was less than half full. The next riddle Adam has to crack goes like this. A man is thinking about how fast his life is flying by. The day before yesterday, I was 34. And the next year, I'll be 37. The man hasn't made any mistakes in his calculations. Can you guess what day his birthday is? Adam spends 20 minutes trying to figure this puzzle out and succeeds. What is his answer? The man's birthday is on December 31st. He's thinking about it on January 1st. The day before his birthday, he was 34. The next day, he turned 35. A new year started the next day, and that year, he's going to turn 36. And he will be 37 the following year. The riddle is solved, and Adam is allowed to move to the next room. In the middle, there's a large TV screen. Suddenly, it switches on. Adam sees two girls who are going down to a dark basement. No, 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 the guy whispers. That's how all horror movies start. And right he is. The door slams behind the girls' backs. It's so unexpected that Adam jumps in his seat. The girls scream. Since the power's out, one of them switches on the flashlight on her phone. They see three doors. Something's moving behind the first one. Who's there? Adam can hear one girl whispering. Her voice is trembling. It turns out that the first door hides, oh no, several hungry zombies. A big fire's ranging behind the second door. And if the girls open the third door, 
they'll see exposed live electrical wires. And then, a voice tells Adam, you have to say which door they should choose. If you make a mistake, they won't survive. Hmm, no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> Luckily, Adam is smart enough to help the girls. Which door does he pick? The third door. The power's out, and the wires are totally harmless. The next riddle Adam has to solve is a logic one. One wizard makes his prisoners choose between two doors. Behind one of them, there's an unfriendly dragon. Behind the other, a chest with gold. Pick the right door, and you'll become a rich person and will be allowed to leave the castle. But if it's the wrong door, well, you aren't likely to survive. There are two signs on the doors. One always lies, the other is truthful. On the first door, it's written, The treasure is here. The dragon is in the next room. The other sign says, The treasure and the dragon aren't in the same room. Where is the gold? The chest with the treasure is in the second room. The second statement is true, which means the first one is false. Adam knows the show must go on, but where should he go next? The room he's in has four doors, one in each of its walls. After looking around, he notices a note in the corner. He picks it up and sees a strange inscription. After thinking for a while, he opens some application on his phone, looks at it, and leaves through one of the doors. What does the inscription mean, and what application is it? Adam turned the note upside down. Now it read south. Then he used a compass app on his phone to find out which door was leading to the south. The guy found himself facing the last challenge. It was another detective case. Ruth was moving home. While she was busy with boxes, someone took her laptop. The girl went over to her new neighbors. Perhaps one of them had seen something. Eric told her he had been staying at home with a high fever for the whole day. Emma said she didn't even know a new neighbor was coming. And Jonathan explained he just got home from his office. Who took Ruth's laptop? Adam is an observant guy. He immediately noticed that Jonathan's car was covered with a thick layer of snow. The man lied. He wasn't at work. Finally, Adam gets back to the main hall. He's passed all the challenges and cracked all the riddles. Well, I guess he's about to become a millionaire. And waiting for him inside is the tax man. Oh boy, 